Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Andrew Glazer, and today I would like to teach you how to use the graph to write the formula for the polynomial function that we see in front of us. So the first thing I want to do is kind of give you a little bit of a model here. All right, so what we're going to write out, I'm going to write out a, a sample a model equation here, okay? And there's a couple of things we're going to have to answer, and once we answer these things, uh, we'll be able to find our overall function, okay? So first thing I want you to write is plus minus sign, and you're going to plus or minus some coefficient that'll represent the leading coefficient. Then it's going to be a series of factors now. So this we can say x is going to be plus or minus some constant value of a, I don't know what it is. Another factor will be x or plus or minus some other constant value b. Maybe they're the same, who knows. Then we're going to have x is plus or minus some other constant c, and dot, 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 dot. However, however many we're going to need depending upon the overall degree of the polynomial. All right, so we let's use this model now. And what we're going to fill in is all I have to do is identify what the C is and the A's and the B's and, oh, I use C over there. Well, it's a different color, so it's a different C. Okay, those are not related. Um, anyway, so the first thing I want to do is kind of understand the end behavior, all right, the end behavior of the function. Now, by end behavior, I mean what happens on the, on, the, on the periphery. In other words, what happens when the function goes all the way to the left and when the function goes all the way to the right, all right? Well, what happens as it moves to the left, it goes on up forever in quadrant number two. And as it goes on to the right forever, it goes on down in quadrant four forever. Now, this is a pattern, and these are the four major patterns that you definitely want to memorize for polynomial functions. So if you notice, uh, there's only one here that matches with our end behavior, where it goes on and on and on forever in quadrant two, on and on and on forever downward in quadrant number uh, four. So what this tells me is that I have an odd degree polynomial, okay, and that I have a negative leading coefficient, okay? Now, let's flip back. And in terms of the model, let's see what I can now kind of tweak. So I know the leading coefficient here is going to be negative. That's what it told me. So now we're going to get rid of the plus and minus, and we're just going to now have a negative symbol there. Okay. I don't know what the coefficient is yet though. All right. But it's negative. The next thing I know, as it, as we mentioned, is that it's going to be an odd value. What that means is that you have to have an odd number of factors here. So I wrote three down, but it could have been one. It could be five. It could be seven. Uh, yeah. I don't think you'll see something like that because you know, unless the test is just one question long, um, it's going to take you a while. Um, but so here we're going to have probably three, okay, but some odd value. So that's all my end behavior tells me. The next thing I have to do is then look at the x-intercepts, all right, of the function. And I want you to note what they are, right? So I have an x-intercept here. Let me choose just a different color. I have an x-intercept here. It looks like at three, all right, negative three, that is. So I have an x-intercept at negative three. I have another x-intercept at negative 1. And then I have another x-intercept now at positive 3. All right, so this is starting to look good because if you notice, I have an odd number of x-intercepts. Now, that might not work out to be the case, all right, but um, it, it, it should all work out in the end, okay? So, um, again, what happens if that happens? Check out some more of our videos because I'm sure I'm going to cover... Uh, that type of question, because we cover literally thousands of questions. Um, so what I want to now write down, okay, is that these values now will represent, okay, very closely, it'll represent the A, the B, and the C value, okay? So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to, but but one thing, it, you're going to have to change the sign of it, all right? So it, even though, yes, the x-intercept's negative 3, when you plug that into your, for in factored form, you have to flip the sign, all right? I'm sure you've seen that before. So instead of writing plus minus now, I'm gonna write plus three, okay? That's for this value. Then for this one, it's a negative one, so I gotta make it a positive one. So get rid of the next thing and make it a positive one. Then get rid of the next thing. And since this is a positive three, I have to turn that into negative, so that's a negative three. And you can kind of get rid of those dot, dot, dots for now, okay? The next thing is, after you identify those x-intercepts, so maybe I'll call this step A of number two, step B will to, be to identify the multiplicity, okay? Multiplicity. In other words, 
what are the powers okay, of each of these uh, factors? Now, it turns out that there's some patterns here to odd multiplicities and even multiplicities, or in other words, odd powers and even powers, and their behavior um, around the x-axis. Now, I have a whole video dedicated to explaining just why that's the case. Check, a, uh, check out the link in the description below, okay? I'll leave it for you. If you're curious as to why it happens, which I highly suggest you do view it, um, it it'll make a whole lot more sense. So right from here, once I see that this thing is crossing that x-axis, it crosses it. I then know that it is going to be an odd multiplicity. In other words, the f this x-intercept, which correlates with this factor, should have some odd value, okay? Some odd value. Now, since it kind of just crosses it and there's no kind of little snakingness to it, I know that it's going to be to the first degree. Once you start getting some snaking going on, then you have third degree, fifth degree, seventh degree, you know, whatever. To differentiate between third, fifth, seventh gets really, really tough. It's almost could be almost impossible sometimes to kind of differentiate that on a graph. Um, but we're also talking about least degree. So that would mean that the least odd value I know of is a one, right? So that's why it's going to be a one up there, okay? Then for the same thing for point at negative one, notice how it crosses. So that's also odd. All right, so in other words, that should also be a 1. And then same thing here at x being equal to 3. It crosses it fully. It doesn't bounce. The only other way it's going to look is it's going to bounce. It's either going to cross. It might cross in a snaking pattern, but it'll either cross or it'll bounce. Okay, so whenever it crosses, again, that's odd. The least value, the least odd value I know is going to be 1. Okay, so now I have those. Great. That takes care of that step. And then step number three is then going to be to find the y-intercept now. Y-intercept is going to be easy. All right. From looking at the graph here, it appears that the y-intercept is going to be at two. It almost looks like it's a little off from two. But quite honestly, how am I ever going to figure? Uh, well, maybe. Well, actually, we can figure it out. It might actually be a little bit off than two. But um, actually, no. I need, to, um, I need to assume that it is two because um, otherwise... I can't really figure out this C unless I'm going to do some testing. Yeah, so I have to assume that it is right at 2, okay? So the y-intercept here will be y is equal to 2, all right? Now we got everything we need. The only piece of information that I have to find now is my leading coefficient value. I know the sign of it. It's negative, but what is it? 1? Is it a half? Is it 2 thirds? Is it pi? I don't know. That's now where we're going to go to next. So what you now have to do, you have to use your y-intercept value, okay? You're going to plug that value in for your f of x, meaning for the y value of 2 equals negative c. Okay. Now what you're going to do is everywhere you see your x, you're going to plug in a value of 0. Because remember, what we're doing now is we're using this y-intercept. Remember, the coordinates of that y-intercept is going to be an x value of 0 and a y value of 2. So what I'm doing now is I'm saying, well, when I plug in a value of 0 for x, my y value better come out to be 2. Now, if it does, that's great. Then my leading coefficient is just a 1. And if it doesn't, well, that's what I'm going to solve for then. All right, I'll be able to figure it out. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I basically now plug 0. It'll be 0 plus 3. Okay. Then it'll be 0 plus 1. Then it's going to be 0 minus 3. And let's see what we get. So we get now 2 is equal to negative C. And this will work out to be now 3 times 1 times then negative 3. Right? So the math inside of those brackets there is going to be 3 times 1 times negative 3 is going to be a negative 9. Okay. Now what you can start doing is you can start saying, well, negative times a negative will just be positive, right? So you can just say 2 is equal to now 9c, and then divide 9 by both sides, and guess what? We found our c value. Our c is going to be 2 ninths. Okay. And then from here, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we now need to do. We take this c value okay, that we just found, and we plug it in for C here, okay? So now I'm going to make everything official. Keep the negative sign, okay? Because I already know it's negative, all right? Keep that negative sign. So it's going to be negative 2 over 9. And then you can just clean this up a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. And there you have it. Now, if you want, you can fully factor. You know, Well, this is fully factored. Excuse me. You can fully FOIL this, okay? You can X times X and X squared. You'll eventually wind up at x cubed, <clears throat> and you'll have a negatively 
Excuse me, I can't speak. You have a negative leading cough. As the weather gets colder, man, the voice really starts to uh, starts to cramp up a little bit. Is that the right word? Cramp up? I don't know. Uh, maybe I just can't speak anymore. I don't know. Yeah, what are you going to do? Um, you'll have a negative leading coefficient here for that x cubed value. All right. Uh, but this would be the uh, function if you were to graph this thing you know, on your calculator. It sh the output should basically be exactly this. All right. So I hope that helps. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. All right. If you can, like and subscribe. Give us a hand. We appreciate it so very much. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. Check out our channel because we've got thousands of videos out there to help you. Okay. Not only in math, but physics, chemistry as well. And we got a whole lot of other stuff coming. So stay tuned. Bye-bye.